Welcome to the Decide to Move podcast, helping entrepreneurs like you make smart, pivotal shifts in your life and business. Tune in each episode for inspiring stories from brilliant business minds and trailblazers to find out how they made their big moves and how you can too. Now here's your host, author, speaker, business strategist, CEO, and founder of Decide to Move, Monica M. Bijou. Welcome to another episode of Decide to Move podcast. I am so excited today because I have one of a person that I met and we connected from day one and she is doing some amazing, amazing, amazing things. She is an award-winning and best-selling author, a wife, mom, speaker, and entrepreneur. Let me tell you, when I said that she wears those hats well, she (laughs) wears them well, and she's going to help you with all that. She coaches women and wives on how to own their truth, write their stories, build a business, and leave a legacy for their family. Without further ado, I would like you to meet and give her a round of applause, Miss Tamara Mitchell Davis. Hi, Tamara. How are you doing? Hello. I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm so glad that we finally got a chance to get you on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. When you said round of applause, I had one of those moments that I wanted to do the clap. Because <laughs> you deserve it because, thank I mean, you. you also, not only are you award-winning bestseller, but you created had your first anthology and you were number one bestseller in eight categories with yes. nine women. That was amazing. Yes. Eight categories, nine women, six days. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you like when I said that she wears the hat, she wears them well. This is a hardworking woman that makes sure that she shows up and shows out no matter what she does. So I am so happy that she's here to share with you how you can actually own your truth and tell your story. But before we get into that, Tamara, can you tell us what has been your journey? So my journey started um, maybe about 10, 15 years ago with writing. I've always had the desire to write. Um, been writing. I was the teacher with all the cousins who gav- you know, galvanized everyone together. Uh, let's play school. I was the teacher that corrected papers with the red ink pen. Um, having them do uh, punishment papers a hundred times, what to write. So I, I just love writing. Um, so any opportunity I could uh, find the space to write, I would. And so uh, that's where the, the journey initially started with playing school, uh, journaling some emotions as a teenager and then young adult, um, having that be an outlet, uh, a release for me and also space for healing and just being who I was created to be. And that's how it has evolved. Um, and so that that's where it all started, just my love for writing. And it just evolved into a different element of writing now and that's coaching other women and wives into telling their stories. And that's great. And, and, you know, before we even go a little further, you talked about you use journaling as an outlet, as a way to express your feelings and emotions. How important is that right now with everything that's happening in the world? I mean, we have the pandemic, we have the situation that's happened, you know, in other states, you know, people protesting, rioting. I mean, we just have to be real um, on Decide to Move. I mean, you can't move without actually being intentional about it. Um, how has journaling, what would you give people as an advice for actual journaling out their emotions right now? Yeah, so sometimes it, it's difficult to find the safe space um, for that release in writing. So whether it's like emotions or just the experience, it's difficult in sometimes communicating what it feels like, um, what you're thinking. And so journaling for me allowed me the space to do just that. Um, And given the current state of affairs with, you know, individuals or just our environments being emotionally charged, not knowing how to channel that energy, not knowing how to show up, not knowing how to help the cause, um, to prevent different things with the COVID, it's just so many things going on right now. And so sometimes you, you know, we find comfort in writing or I find comfort in writing um, because it allows me that safe space no judgment zone where I can just be who I am, say what I want to say. I don't have to get caught up in what people will think about me if I say this or how I might feel or even question the validity of how I feel. And so I think it's very important to to create some type of space so that you can have that outlet. Otherwise, you'll find yourself, you know, walking around 
with carrying a lot on the inside internally, but then also carrying things outside, which we always attribute to the baggage, right? And so um, having that that release, you know, that safe space to release and, and just be you and, and not be, um, apolog- you know, just how they say unapologetically you, just exactly. showing up, yeah, and who you are. Yeah, and I appreciate that. And, you know, for my co- coaching clients as well as my therapy clients, I often tell them to write. I tell everybody to write. And at first they're like, Ugh, reluctant to it. But then right. once you start processing things, it makes a big, huge difference of what comes out. I've had clients just say, well, I sat down and I didn't know what to write. I just started writing. This is stupid. And next, you know, they have five pages later. And it's like, because all that was inside of you that you were not allowing yourself to have that release. And we right. often get so used to, pushing it aside you know when i think about boys when they grow up they're told suck it up you're a man stop crying like, don't, don't do cry. this and yeah. they don't learn how to release that and so mm-hmm. oh my my men are big journalers if you're my client <laughs> you writing some stuff out mm-hmm. and you can definitely see the difference so yeah. so when do you determine uh, decide to actually take your writing to make it an actual profession so i um going back to where it started it was just a space for me to be me. And then as I started connecting with other women as an adult, they were expressing to me some of the same emotions that I was dealing with. And when you are going through something, I'll speak for myself, so I'll raise my hand. When when you're going through something, most times you may feel alone. You may feel by yourself or why me or why is this happening to me or you know, we, we internalize certain things. So as I was connecting with other women, understanding, realizing that they were experiencing some of, experiencing some of the same emotions, it was, it was too, too much of a burden for me to just not do anything, right? So I had to understand where you are. I need to, need to help you understand where you are, but then understand how you can have that release. And so that's where the, where the, the book coaching came from. And that's helping women own where you are because it is your truth and no one else's. But then how do we turn this into an actual product? And and, and just to add to that, so, you know, most times, you know, you always or most have that that spirit of give back. You want to help someone else. You want to inspire. You want to impact. And this is one way to do that. Understanding that the journey that you're on, it isn't new but it's different. And so you can always provide words of encouragement or inspiration for someone else who's currently on the path that you once traveled. And so because of that alone, as I connected with the women and saw the similarities, I said, you know what, been there, done that. And so I want to show others how to um, have the release, how to get their stories told, how to monetize their message, how to build a business while wearing multiple hats because um, we all, you know, we're busy. We don't have time. And how do I do this? And a wife and a mom and a caregiver and and finding the time to pursue our own goals and our own dreams. So that's where, where the passion started. That's where the flame started burning. Yeah. What would you tell that a woman who says, no one's going to care about my story. I mean, what I've, you know, done, no, it's not going to influence anyone. What would you say to that person? I would say to them, um, and usually that, that stems from a place of, um, I want to start off with validation, right? Wanting to be validated, wanting to have someone connect with the story and being unsure who would want to read the story or who would feel this is important enough to buy and, and feeling as if they're afraid. They, they, they're not sure about putting their story out there. You don't want to hurt anyone. And I get that. Um, you don't want to um, be in a place where you're being judged because of your truth. And no one wants to be outside of their comfort zone. So I, I just share with them from an authentic place, um, a tra- transparent place, how important it is to be free right and free and that's not not saying that we still won't have things that we struggle with but some things are within our own control and that's managing our emotions we can control that (laughs) we can't control other people but we can control you know those elements or aspects of our lives and so i would just share with other women um one to uh tap into why you are 
uh, resistant to writing or why you're resistant to sharing your story and get some understanding around what's preventing you from doing that. Is it be, is it fear? Is it, you know, being judged? Is it shame? Is it guilt? Right. Honing in on some of those underlying emotions that could prevent you from moving forward or taking that step forward. So I usually have those conversations initially just to see where you are um, to determine what's the next step. Yeah, and, and I appreciate you saying that because one of the things like you were saying, talking about move, you know, uh, Decide to Move podcast is really about people making pivotal shifts in their life as well as in their business. And it sounds like one of the things that you do is help people lay the foundation and the groundwork to move to move, to make that shift, find their purpose, uh, reach their destination and their goal by first starting with them. And so many times people like we're helpers, right? As women, right. we're helpers. We're here to help everybody else, but ourselves. And I recently had that conversation with some recently, somebody recently, they were telling me all the things they were doing. And I'm like, uh, I hear you helping a lot of people, but what are you doing for yourself? For yourself They're like, you yeah. caught that? And I'm like, it's so <laughs> obvious. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So do you feel like you actually have to do a lot of convincing to help someone finally say, yes, I need to tell my story? Um, I wouldn't say convincing. Um, it's just sharing a different perspective because sometimes we get used to, to telling ourselves the same narrative. We keep repeating the thing over and over and we start to believe it and mm -hmm. we don't unlearn or, or have, um, a different way of thinking until we learn something different. So it's just having those conversations to understand what's, what are some of the uh, underlying reason, reasons um, that you're afraid to tell your story or that you're ashamed of telling your story or like you, you shown up, you, you showed up, you said you want to tell your story, but then now you start backpedaling. So I need to understand what's the backpedaling because if you're ready to go, then I'm the one to help you but you have to do the work. And I always tell um, the ladies, even in my writer's community, I say to them, a book won't just write itself, right? So yes, you can hire a ghostwriter, but guess what? You still have to communicate to the ghostwriter your story. You still have to give them something to work with. <laughs> so at the end of the day, you are still telling your story. You're just not writing it out. You're not you know, in the, the flow and the process of it all, but you are sharing out about your story. So. Um, I just, I don't convince, um, I just give them a different perspective, um, allow for a space of understanding, and then they decide if it's something that they're interested in, how do they want to move forward, or if they're not ready. And if, if they're not ready, then that's okay too. <laughs> because and that's why I say, like, you have to own your truth. You have to be uh, comfortable with your story, um, find that place of healing in your story because you have to tell the story in order to sell the story. And so, you know, it, it takes some inner work um, to get to that place. And so I just, I just have those candid conversations and, and it's no influence, it's no twisting of arms, it's no throwing bottles, there's nothing violent to it. it it's, it's where you are. And, and if you're ready, then let's go. So and I like you said that because I wanted to make sure people understand that it is not twisting your arm or convincing you to do something. It, it's an internal place. It comes from you wanting to say, I'm ready to tell my story. I'm ready for that next level and growth. It's what happens after, you know, and in fact, I've had the honor to interview the women that was on your last project and the growth that they experience after telling their story is something that is priceless, like literally yes no one could have told them this is where you're going to be like they actually had their own experience and it was wonderful to watch yes, yes and and it was wonderful for me to see as well like seeing where they started and and then the end product <laughs> of how they evolved in a short amount of time I, i'm just amazed i'm happy for them all but it, it was definitely a joy to watch because it was a process but they trusted the process um, and so it allowed them to not only um, open up and be transparent and vulnerable in telling their story, but they moved outside of their comfort zones. And so that's where the challenge came. But they, they rose to the occasion and, and they were definitely, definitely pleased with the outcome. And so I, I was happy. I'm happy. I'm still happy for them. We'll continue to be happy for them um, because it, it, was, it was a great experience. 
but it also shows your leadership and your coaching as well because you were with them each step of the way and the difference is, is that you held space for them where they are because mm -hmm. when you're dealing with a lot of different personalities and people in different places in their life getting them all to one cohesive place does yeah. take effort it takes patience and so i commend you on yeah. having all of that yeah thank you thank you yeah they said that to me too it's like yeah tamara helps you she walks alongside of you she holds your hand and i'm like that's just what i do but thank you <laughs> but thank you but uh, i was definitely um you know overjoyed excited pleased with with the experience and the outcome and like i said to watch them um, is what brought the most joy to my heart because I, I'm a published author and so award-winning Amazon best-selling you know you hear the accolades but what brought joy to me is watching them show up in that same space so I, I'm, I'm definitely overjoyed with that yeah and how had, did that change you like one winning an award being bestseller what how did that help you evolved in just who you are as a person in your in your personal life so when you get to the place of um, showing up in different spaces, uh, writing stories, publishing stories, it, it builds confidence. Um, and so I initially, when I started out, I was um, wondering, questioning. Remember I said that other women connect with me and I see their story, they see my story. And that's where the connection is because I identify with where you are. You're not sure if anyone will buy the book. You're not sure what to write about. Do I have what it takes? Do I have the writing ability? So I once had those same questions. So it's giving them the perspective and having them see through me what is possible. And so what it's changed for me is I, I, I think about how I've evolved as a woman, as a writer, as a wife, as a business owner um, into someone who's confident, someone who, um, and, and I don't mean confident in an arrogant way. I mean confident in my abilities and my capabilities because sometimes you can measure yourself up to other people or measure yourself up to what else is out there. And so I, I say I, I'm, I'm focused, I'm in my own lane <laughs> and I'm watching what's before me. And so confident in the most humble way, um, Another space um, that I would say um, how things have changed is just understanding what I feel to be my, my purpose. That, that, again, is another um, game changer for me. And, and this experience was proof of that in addition to working with other women who are interested in writing their stories. Um, I do feel purpose driven and I don't mean to you know, use that cliche and take it from someone else. Um, but I do feel the work that I do is purpose driven. And what keeps you motivated to continue to show up every single day and not only for yourself in your writing, but to help other people as well, especially when we're going through trying times. Mm -hmm. So as you were asking that question, of course, it, 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 what, what, what am I? Yes, that's it. It's how I want to be remembered. <laughs> it's the dash. That, yes, that's, that's what keeps me motivated. How I want to be remembered, the lives that I'm impacting, um, for someone to look at me and believe or hear from me and believe or see me and believe, it goes back to impact and inspiration. So that's what keeps me motivated. Um, and then um, just being resilient, understanding that it's no straight line or it wasn't a straight line for me. I can't speak for everyone else. It wasn't a straight line for me. It wasn't, you know, a clear path set before me and I just walked a straight and narrow. It definitely were some ebbs and flows, some hills and some valleys <laughs> with life. Um, but being in this, in this space, it just, it just allows me to um, appreciate where I am, but definitely know where I came from and appreciate that too. Um, and they, and just being mindful that in the lessons, there's blessings. And so this is a blessing. Yeah. And it's about authenticity. And that's one of the things that, you know, when you were talking about, it's like, for me, the word authentic kept popping across my own screen in my head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's one of the things of, you know, being honest and not, you know, when you say it's not a straight and arrow that there are ebbs and flows and, you know, weaving and bobbing and, and it's understand important for people to understand that, that they look at the end result. Yeah. They don't understand the process. 
right. you know, what it took to get to where, to get there, yes, yes, what mm-hmm. you had to go through. So, and that's super huge and important. So what are some strategies that you can give to someone who's interested in telling their story, but don't know where to get started um, and just don't even know what direction of anything, like, you know, or they wrote their story and they don't know what to do with it afterwards. Mm-hmm. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss an episode by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. Mm -hmm. So I'll start off with um, the first um, question on what do you tell someone who's just now starting out? So if you if you're, you know, into or interested in writing memoirs or inspirational books and it's tied to your life, we will we'll say, oh, I want to write a story about my life, right? And so a life, the life is this, <laughs> right? This, this uh, array of activities, experiences. And so that can be overwhelming alone because you're just, it's a lot. You just don't know where to start. Do I start when I was five? Do I start when I'm 12? Do I talk about as a wife? Like, where do I start? And so it can be overwhelming when it's approached in that, in that way because it's just a lot to take in. And so I automatically would suggest or recommend um, identify one area of your life that you wanna focus on, that you're interested in focusing on and telling that story. And once you start from there, you, it's like the foundation. You can build from there, but you have to start somewhere. And so it's like throwing up, you know, a whole bunch of marbles in the air and you're trying to catch them all and then put them all in one bucket at the same time. You're going to miss some, some will fall, some will roll away. But if you start clear with just one, then you can grab the other pieces in as it relates or connects with the story message that you want to share. So first and foremost, um, pick one and start there, Um, a a message, a book theme. Um, And then in regard, I'll go to the, to the latter question, which was, what do you do if you have, was it if you have a book already? Yeah. Like, or you wrote it down in a little journal or been writing out your little story. Cause there's so many people that have like little stories, but they never actually did anything with them. Right. And oftentimes when you journal, and this happened to me a few months ago, I went through journals that I had, cause I'm the type I'll have journals, notebooks, sticky notes, things written down on napkins tucked inside the notebook, like all over the place. So one, of course, go through and read your notes because there more than likely will be similarities within all the notes that you share. And so if there's a common theme that's resonating in what you've already written, then that's another place that you can start. So that will help you to, again, start with the foundation, start from one particular space and place and build from there. Now that's bringing it all in. Once you have the book and you're published, it's like, now what? Now what? Um, I didn't write books for them to sit on a shelf or collect dust. So as a self-published author, I know it's my charge. I know it's my job and my duty to continuously share my message, connect with my audience, show them the value, show them the benefits of what I have, because my book is my business. And I often tell Others that I work with, my book started my business. That's how I started with the coaching and you know other products and services that I provide. But it, it's it's um it's about business building and that business sense. So you have to market, otherwise no one will know about you. <laughs> you have to promote, otherwise no one will know about you. And so having that that business sense or building the business sense tied to your book treating your book as a business um, is another place and and those are two variations starting from the beginning with the idea in your head or having the book in your hand throughout each phase and stage it's work that you have to do there's work so um those would be my initial uh tips (laughs) depending on where you are in the process Yes, most definitely. You definitely don't want, don't want to be the best known kept secret, <laughs> right? Exactly. Because <laughs> people are like, everybody know me. Where? Right. Like, right. Or I wrote the book for me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I got a, a hundred copies in my closet. Right. right. For me. Like, what, what you doing with those books kind of thing? Yeah. So what are some other strategies and different things that you have seen that has worked for you um, as you continue to evolve in your, in your process? So 
three words that I've learned and I constantly repeat to myself, even now, even today, is trust the process. Three words, trust the process. So being okay with your story, making peace with your story, uh, deciding to take the journey and writing your story to publishing your story, but trusting the process. Um, and understanding that when I am in the writing phase, I should be focused on writing. When I'm in editing, I should be focused on editing, right? And so being in that process or stage, trusting the process, knowing that when I get ready for the next step, the next step will present itself. So I'm, I don't like, I've spoken to women, you know, all the time who say, oh, well, I'm not sure if anyone will buy my book. And my next question is, do you have anything written? <laughs> do you even start writing? Right. And so sometimes we're worried about things that that's not relevant at the time. Like it has its own place in, in, in space. But right now, let's focus on the current step. Um, and so those three words resonate with me. And I forget when I started saying them to myself. But whenever I am working, whenever I am coaching, whenever I'm just thinking, whenever I am frustrated, I constantly tell myself, trust the process trust the process. So those are powerful <laughs> three words. I, I like them. In fact, that's one of on my journal book or my, I have an action planner and on it, it actually says trust the process because it's so true when you are, you know, doing your going for your goals and you're doing step by step and you're thinking, I'm never going to get there. Right. Take one moment at a time, focus yeah. on where you currently are. I actually remember having to tell a client one time, focus on where your feet are planted. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why are you all the way like right. next year and you are <laughs> right here in your kitchen washing your dishes, focus where right. you're planning. And she's like, I never thought about that. I'm like, and that's yeah. why you're all over the place. Yeah. Focus where your feet are planted. Just yeah. stop for a moment and it's okay. Like we'll get there, but enjoy the moment. And oftentimes we don't enjoy the moment. We really have a hard time doing that. So yeah. And I, I, that's what I was going to say. Just being in that moment, being in that moment. And, 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 and sitting in that moment. And I was guilty of that before. I would be in the moment and vroom, right? Same thing. The pro people were asking me from one anthology to the next anthology, like, did you, you just, are you okay? Are you in the, mo I'm in the moment, but I also understand and know how I work. <laughs> so that's my truth. I'm owning my truth. I know how I am. I know how I function. Um, I'm in the moment and I'm trusting the process. So <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's one of the things that's so true is being your authentic self and staying focused on who you are, not what other people think that you should be. Yes. Cause yes. I mean, I'm sure that you've probably encountered that as you were doing your own stuff that people have given you advice about what you should be doing compared right. to what you are. Mm -hmm. What would you say to those people that are, are interested in writing their story, making changes, you know, going after their purpose and they're being told a lot of things that like what they shouldn't be doing compared to what, how a person can be helped. What would you say to those? I would say to them, um, hmm, I would definitely First of all, we're all unique in our own right. We're all different. And the way that someone else thinks, runs their business, how they operate, that's them. So I'm not saying that you, you should not um, discredit any advice that you're given. Um, definitely be mindful of the information that's shared with you and the advice that's given because, you know, people are have intelligent genes too. And they may see other things that you're not able to see. Um, however, I do say, um, chew the meat and throw out the bone. So chew on what's good for you, chew on what's relevant for you, and get rid of the rest. Because at the end of the day, it's your vision. Someone else may have an idea based on what you shared with them of your vision, but they weren't given the vision to begin with. It's your vision. So. You can take the advice, you can take the information, chew the meat, throw out the bone, and stay true to your vision. Yeah, I like that. Except for if you're my grandmother, you would be chewing the bone too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, she got the bones and the grizzle all the time. I'm like, is that eating up your insides? But yeah, she used to eat the whole 
me. The whole bone. Yes, my grandmother too. The whole bone. I'm like, where is the bone? Right, go on. Be over there just getting down. So, so go unless on. you're my grandmother, you know, you mean because like, it's not good to be chewing the bone anyway. But right, you know, definitely take what's good for you and throw out the rest, or yes. you know, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I'm I'm super excited and want to make sure the audience uh, get and follow you. But before they do, what are some of the name the names of your books? Because you have several that you've written yourself, and then you have your anthology, and then you have one that you're working on. So yes. get the naming. <laughs> yes. So the first book is titled Goal Getter, and so it's Goal G O A L because it's intentional, it's strategic. And my mom used to always say, because I'm a busybody, oh, you just go, go, go. You stay on the go. So as I was writing the book and connecting the business of it to my life experiences, um, it was intentional with saying goal getter because I'm aiming for a purpose. I'm striving for results and I'm being intentional. So goal getter is the first book. The second book is Goodbye Fear, Hello Destiny. Um, and again, I share writing my story. I was... Um, uh, I was doubting myself. I was operating from who would want to read my book. Did I have what it takes? I was operating in fear myself. And so I realized the world that exists outside of the fear. And so from that, it was goodbye fear. I'm, I'm waving goodbye to fear and I'm screaming hello to my destiny because I know it's more for me out there. Um, and then the anthology is blessed, not broken. And with this book here, um, it's just, it's lessons that we find, the blessings that we find in the lessons, right? We go through different things. We, we you know, again, the ebbs and flows of life. Sometimes we question ourselves. We, we question the experience. We wonder why me? How could this be me? Woe is me. Like we go through all of that, but, and, and not even sure of how we'll find it on the other side, but somehow we journey through. And when we come out on the other side, we then look back to say, I didn't even know I could make it. I didn't think I could make it. I didn't even think this was possible, but I'm here. And so it's blessed, not broken, because although the situations and circumstances may have um, allowed some broken experiences or even for us to walk around and feel broken, um, acknowledging that we're blessed. And again, that's trust in the process. So that's blessed, not broken. And then the current anthology um, project, we just had our orientation today. Um, and this is about um, second chances. So the second time around, again, I write books from inspiration, motivation, and it's about the test. And if we don't pass the test that life throws at us, we'll find ourselves taking the test over and over and over and over and over. So it's talking about those experiences where we've been tested and the journey of the test, but yet we've come out on the other side. And so again, uh, having the flashlight, shining the light for those who are on those, the, the, the paths that we once traveled to be an inspiration to say, I made it, you can too. I'm here, you can be here too. I've done it, you can do it too. And so that's, that's the inspiration behind the current book project. I love all of them and people yeah. really can find inspiration <laughs> in every single one of them. Like every, we can see ourselves as human beings in each and every last one of those stories. And one of the biggest things, like the, the most recent that you were talking about um, is the fact that I've actually had that conversation recently where someone's like, why me? Why do I have to keep going through this? I said, because obviously you're not passing the test. Yes, if you yes. keep handling things the same way that you've been doing all this time, mm -hmm. then obviously something has to change. You know, if so if you attend Attack it the same way, you're getting the same results. Same that is the definition of what? Yeah. Okay. Yep. As a therapist, you know that means insanity. So uh -huh. I may need you to get it together yourself. So, well, what's a good way for people want to find your purchase your books and then also to follow you on social media? Yes. Yeah, so um, my website is www.theceowife.com. That's my brand. Um, you can also find me on social media, Facebook, the CEO wife, Instagram, the CEO wife, eight, six, zero. And those are my platforms. That is eight, six, zero, the area code. Or what does that yes. stand for? Eight, six, zero is the area code. Uh, I never forget where I came from. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that, that was the inspiration behind that. 
<laughs> I was like, love it. So is there any last words that you have to share with our audience? So last words I would want to share, I think I would just uh, reiterate um, owning your truth, right? So if there's something that you desire, and I'm, and I'm specifically speaking on uh, writing your story, if it's something that you desire, it's been burning inside of you, it won't just leave. It's not going to just disappear and go away. It's something that you're going to have to wrestle with, pin down, and figure out how do I make this happen. And so when you get to the space to say that I'm ready, then you know that you're ready, ready, ready. And then, you know, figure out where you want to start to begin with. Where do you want to start? What message will your book, um, uh, foundationally, what will be the theme of your book or the message of your book? And just start writing. We've heard that before. Just write, just write. But writing provides a space for healing. It provides a space of therapy because you're getting it out. It, it's definitely a, a release. And so start there, just write. And I guarantee you when you get to the place of what's next, the next step will show up. But you have to trust yourself and trust the process. That's it. So those are the words that I want to leave um, with everyone. Trust the process, believe in yourself, own your truth, write your story, and don't let anyone discredit your story. It's your story. Like no one else knows your story better than you know your story. So that's it. <laughs> and that, that that's good. Like that's not just it. That's great. And then I do want to add another plug that uh, Tamara has her own podcast called The CEO Wife Experience. So you can also catch her on your favorite platform as well. So she's yeah. definitely doing some great things, showing up, showing out. As I said before, in the very beginning, she's definitely doing that. So thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Decide to Move podcast. Thank you, Tamara, for showing some uh, sharing some really great nuggets and helping people get out of their shell and actually reach their next destination through the written word. Um, Thank you for listening to the Side to Move podcast with Monica M. Bijou. If you are ready to make a pivotal shift and take your destined position in the world, then schedule a free discovery call by going to www.decidetomove.com. For all links mentioned in today's show and to listen to previous episodes, go to www.decidetomovepodcast.com. And remember, we've all been delivered rotten fruit in our past. We can choose to chew on the rotten fruit trying to convince ourselves it's what we want, or we can become the fruits of our labor and create an incredible, fulfilling, and inspiring life and business out of it. You have what it takes to create the life you want.